Good afternoon. So my name is uh, Muhammad Sama and I, I am a research fellow at Machine Learning and Intelligence System Legacy NASC. And today I'm going to talk about application of AI and multi spectral imagery for crop health monitoring. So this is the outline of my talk. I'm going to talk about the little bit, the go through the introduction, then what actually is the multi spectral imagery and uh, what are our proposed solutions. Then I will talk about a little bit about vegetation indices and application of AI in health monitoring. So why do we need uh, these scalable and uh, modern uh, fifteen and forming solutions? First, I'm going to go through a little bit about the importance of agriculture sector. Uh, basically, agriculture development is one of the most powerful tool uh, to enhance uh, GDP of most the developed nation ones and uh, also the developing nations. So by 2050, uh, we are pro projected to feed around about 9.7 billion people. And uh, if we grow in agriculture sector, so it, it would be more effective, two to four times more effective in rising income rather than uh, developing other sectors. So it also is very much uh, crucial for economic growth, accounting to 4% of GDP uh, in developed countries and about 25% of the GDP in some of the developing countries. So this is actually the Tetra model of agriculture. Agriculture sector not only uh, operates to these sector, but also these sector would also operate back to the agriculture for overall uh, GDP production. So uh, agriculture would contribute to fuel, food, feed, and fiber, and the uh, uh, Byproducts of these sectors would also contribute back for the agriculture development. So this overall is the agriculture life cycle, uh, which contributes about 25% of the GDP. So next, uh, in, uh, in spite of having tremendous potential in agriculture sector, uh, Pakistan is not that much uh, developed in agriculture sector right now. So there are multiple reasons. Uh, one of is uh, due to the presence of uh, these climate changes that are happening nowadays. And second one is due to the crop pests. Pakistan has the most diverse number of pests in the region. Uh, and because of climate and humidity, humidity conditions, uh, these, uh, these pests affect crop badly and disease impact is worse. So in Pakistan, more than 50 insects and mites are found and uh, these are damaging uh, all the crops, particularly cotton crops and rice crops. And the most notorious pests are aphid, white fly, jesset, and etc. These list more. And because of the impact of these pests, uh, there are crop diseases. And the most crucial factor for the reduction in the uh, production of our agriculture sector is because of the crop diseases. They are a severe threat. And uh, in the figure, you can also see these are the cotton crops uh, that are affected by the uh, pests. And because of uh, the manual uh, the procedures that we are using these days, our yield is very much decreasing, and uh, we do have to move, move forward for the remote sensing techniques and the fusion of IoT with vegan for enhancing, enhancing crop yield and uh, overall production of the cotton crops. So, uh, moving forward, uh, what are the proposed methodology pipelines? So, uh, uh, for the overcoming this uh, disease part of the crop. So we will start with the data acquisition process, then we will uh, come forward for the data analysis part and uh, moving on, we would have our data fusion and model training. And at the end, what would be the application layer and the impact of uh, these model training or overall development of our methodology. So uh, starting with the data acquisition process, the overall prototype development starts with the data acquisition. So we are collecting three main data streams. These are multispectral imagery, IoT data, and the RGB imagery. So uh, uh, this is some of the raw pictures that we have collected from the corn fields in Germany uh, using the RGB imagery camera. And uh, the multispectral imagery are basically captured using single NDVI sensor and parrot sequa plus and other multiple uh, multi uh, other multiple multispectral sensors. And this is the short video of our data acquisition process. So this is actually, uh, this is the Phantom 4 that we are flying in near Sargodha, Punjab, Pakistan. And uh, this basically captured on rice feed as well as on the cotton crop as well. So this on the right is actually a BT cotton crop and this one is the hybrid rice field in, uh, near uh, Sargodha, Punjab. 
and these are the you know starting stage of the rice crop and uh, it's a uh, paddy rice actually and uh, most of the area is watered but we do have multiple cotton crop phases uh, and we got three phenological stages of cotton crop uh, at uh, i think it's captured in the start of july Uh, moving forward, uh, uh, I will start talking about the, our methodology from the multispectral imagery perspective. So why we are using multispectral imagery instead of using RBB imagery? So the basic intuition of multispectral using multispectral imagery is uh, that it not only captures the visible spectrum, but also uh, from you can see here that 400 to 700 nanometer wavelengths are the visible to human eye. But using the multispectral imagery, we can capture the bands other than visible imagery. Other, if these are visible here, that NIR1 and NIR2, uh, we are capturing it. And why do we need these bands? All the vegetation indices uh, that are basically using for the computation of uh, uh, phenology stages and disease estimation are using these multispectral bands, NIR band, red band. So uh, the primary goal of multispectral imagery is to detect the variation of the crop before the visible symptoms appear. And uh, using multispectral imagery, we can also calculate uh, vegetable indices, which are not possible using only RGB imagery. So this is the actual picture of Parrot Sigma Plus sensor that we are using. Uh, it has four bands, basically a uh, green, red, red edge, and near infrared, and a separate RGB camera. You can see here that uh, 1.2 megapixel are uh, uh, is the resolution of each uh, multispectral band, and RGB camera is of 16 megapixel resolution. And uh, it, it uh, I will show the snippets of some of the snippets of these bands. So these are the snippets captured uh, on the corn fields in Germany. Uh, this is a green band, NIR band, red band, and a red uh, red edge band. Uh, uh, after we have calculated, uh, compute, uh, collected the, the multispectral imagery, next next we are going to use the IoT data. So uh, IoT data. Uh, in uh, in the we are in the initial stages of of our project and we are estimating that we would need a temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and uh, the pH sensor. So uh, uh, it, right now we have tested on the SenseCap A1100, which is shown here. Uh, it's actually a, a SenseCap WIO terminal, and on the left side of it, you can see this is the LoRa WAN uh, protocol that uh, if you want to uh, set on your cloud, you can use either LoRa WAN protocol or the Wi-Fi. And the uh, meteorological data will be collected uh, using the time, real time sensors, uh, and it would also contribute to the information regarding the atmospheric impact on the cotton crop. Uh, this is the, uh, some of the testimonies of how the data looks like. This is the humidity sensor values, and uh, it's actually captured five times a day, and it's a real time series data. And this is the mean temperature values of our sense cap group sensors that we are using in our field. Next, after uh, computing the initial data of uh, IoT and multispectral imagery, we are uh, start with the, the data pre-processing stage. We are uh, using several uh, softwares, the pre-processing software like Pix4D Mapper, the WebODM Pix4D Field, and what they do. Uh, actually, while calculating our multispectral imagery, we use 80% overlap of our images. So after we have those images, the, those four bands, we use uh, stitching uh, to compute our orthomosaic mosaic using these, some of the initial pre-processing software. So they stitched all those images together and gave us the orthomosaics mosaics and different vegetable indices can be used. And this is uh, some of the interface of the Pix4D mapper. Uh, this is the RGB mosaic of vineyard fields uh, that we have captured data in, the, in uh, Germany. So uh, below, it actually, uh, when we capture these uh, using Parrot Sigma, it also geotag each image. So it actually produces the TIFF images, which have the long latitude of each and every image. And when we use this images, you can, uh, this mosaic is created using fix 4 d field. And th th this overall mosaic is actually georeferenced on the Google map. And you can see here, these are the highlighted areas. This is the data captured in Germany. These are the vineyard fields, and below you can see it actually, uh, uh, you know, correctly geolocates each uh, location of the crop as well. And uh, after we have uh, calculated all the mosaics and done with the initial uh, pre-processing, we come to the phase of computing our vegetation indices. 
I'll talk about a little bit about multiple vegetation indices. First one is uh, NPVI. So it actually is the difference, uh, is the ratio of difference between NIR band uh, and the red band to so that of NIR, some of the NIR band and red band. Its value varies from minus one to plus one and minus one indicates the, you know, the crop is under severely stressed and plus one indicates that crop has the maximum chlorophyll content and the vegetation NDVA very close to very much zero indicates that either there is an urbanized area or their crop is under stress. Uh, this is the vineyard field and we had, uh, so basically you can see here that uh, vineyard fields that uh, they are actually vertically formed and uh, the brown region here uh, in between these green lines indicate the actually the path between the fields and I have divided uh, the overall uh, threshold values for, uh, into six regions uh, with a green area indicating uh, that the NDPI value is uh, varies from 0 0.75 to 0 0.99 and it actually contributes to 21 percent of the overall area and this uh, brown uh, areas which are depicted here these are actually the uh, non-vegetated area they can even be the roads or something like that and it they actually contribute near to the 30 percent of the uh, overall crop field and this one is also the corn field and we are captured in new Mole. And these are the crop areas, and you can clearly see that these are the stress areas of the crop, uh, where NDVI values varies from uh, around about uh, 0 0.015 to 0.41. And uh, the green areas are the maximum NDVI values with a maximum value of 0 0.87, which indicates that these are the these areas of the crop actually contain the maximum uh, vegetation content of the field. Uh, next, we have another vegetation indices. It's actually a SEVI, uh, which uh, actually is the modified version of the NDVI. Uh, it, there is a correction factor L in the SEVI, uh, which contributes to the soil brightness. It, actually, when we are capturing data through multispectral imagery, uh, we do have the soil brightness impact on our multispectral band. And we, you, uh, we uh, actually compute accurately these data using the L correction factor. And uh, in the multi, uh, in the pre-processing software that we are using, we are actually taking L value close to very much 0 0.5. And uh, you can see here that these blue area, which are just flowing through it, it actually has a very much, uh, low uh, SEVI value, uh, approximately equal to minus 0 0.26. And it actually indicates that this is something like a, a water body or this snow crop here. And these green areas indicate that these are the crop or vegetative region and other these brown areas where, whose threshold values are shown here. These actually are the urbanized areas or there is no vegetation content in, the, in these regions. Next, we have ratio vegetation index. It's an other vegetation index. It's simply a ratio of NIR band to that of red band. And why we are using it, uh, NDVA value is uh, bounded between minus one to plus one, but RVA value just varies infinitely. And it, it, when we have more vegetation content in the region, we have great uh, NIR band reflection. So as we show, as uh, the NIR band reflector increases, NIR uh, RVA value also increases, which actually contributes to the chlorophyll content of the overall crop. Uh, moving on, uh, once we have calculated these uh, uh, NDVI maps, now we are using a thresholding method to actually find the hotspots of crop in the region. Uh, what I've done is I've used 100 by 100 kernel and apply to the whole NDVI map and uh, based I use the uh, set the threshold value to minus 0 0.2. So what it will actually do, it will segregate the crop areas where the NDVI values are less than minus 0 0.2. What the value minus 0 0.2 indicates is actually tells that these areas of the crop which are shown here in the black regions, black boxes actually. So these areas of the crop actually needs to be taken care of. And along with these regions, uh, it also gives us the longitude and latitude of these particular subgrades, 100 by 100 subgrades. So the application of this, uh, 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 this uh, methodology would be that uh, instead of uh, trying, uh, applying your pesticide drawn to the whole crop region, we are going to uh, give it uh, the longitude and latitude of only these subgrades. So it will, the drawn will go only to those subgrades where, where we actually need to apply pesticides and which uh, it will not only uh, increase the crop production, but also increase the crop yield as well. So uh, these um, the prior talks talk about only on the computation of pre-processing and the NDVI mosaic. Now we are incorporating uh, the artificial intelligence in this whole area. So it's uh, actually a process, uh, it's under process and we are developing models for it. But uh, I'll talk only about the basic uh, intuition of using artificial intelligence. 
So uh, in NDVI, we are only capturing the data through multi-spectral imagery and computing the NDVI mosaics and uh, applying thresholding methods and stuff like that. But uh, in artificial intelligence, what we intend to use, we are using multimodality of data. What it actually means that not only we are using the vision, uh, visual side of the imagery, but we are also in group, uh, incorporating the IoT data, uh, like I've talked earlier about the pH sensor, temperature sensor, and then the humidity sensor. So uh, instead of only using uh, vegetation indices, IoT data will uh, provide information about the impact, um, environmental impact of the uh, on the crop health as well. So uh, the CNNs will be used to extract features from the multispectral imagery and RNNs uh, will be used for the time sequence data of our IoT sensor and they will be fused together to uh, uh, tell us uh, about the overall health information of the crop. So coming to the end, uh, why we are doing this and uh, what, if, why is the need of artificial intelligence in this whole area? So after finding the hotspots of the stress in the region, we actually need to compute uh, the, our model will give information about those subjects which are the longitude and the latitude of stress spots. So we, what we will do is not only the impact of environment on the, the crop health will be monitored, but also we can see that how we can avoid uh, a uh, prevailing uh, crop disease, which is coming. We can predict using our model that yes, in this state, is our model, our crop is uh, most likely to be going under stress. So we are going to predict and, and apply pesticides earlier. So uh, coming to end that the precision farming using AI is the only way forward for sustainable and productive agriculture sector. So any question that you can have and suggestion. Any questions? Right now, we are not targeting about the type of the crop disease. We are actually using multi-class model, which is uh, talk about the. Uh, I think majorly we are using three major classes: that crop is uh, healthy, it's uh, under stress, and severely under stress. So uh, not particular disease. And yeah, the uh, the other question is uh, the about. Uh, uh, sorry, the stage of the. Yeah, so basically the purpose of using multispectral imagery that uh, normally but uh, recently in our agriculture sector, it's only using the visuals and RGB imagery. So multispectral, before the visible symptoms appear, multispectral imagery can give us the information about the incoming disease. So yeah, we are, we can predict that the uh, that how uh, I'm not sure about how much early that we can predict, but we are predicting that uh, our crop is going to understand in the coming day. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much.